Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Those of you that follow my channel know that when Topaz Labs initially released Sharpen AI, I wasn't a big fan. I did a video where I was highly critical of the application. Subsequent to that video, though, uh, Topaz Labs updated Sharpen AI several times and they won me over. I'm really a big fan of the app now. I wasn't then. When that video did post, I did receive a lot of emails and comments from people that just disagreed with me uh, totally. They thought Sharpen AI does a great job on many things. And one thing that many people mentioned is it does a great job on macro flower photographs. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to use Sharpen AI on this image. And I chose this image for two reasons. First of all, it's a macro of flowers. But second of all, it is a little bit like blurry. It's not like real, real sharp. And also, I shot this, if you look at it, at an ISO of 1250. And the reason why I did that is it was a relatively breezy day. And these flowers were moving in the wind. And I had to use a fast shutter speed. And I wanted to use an aperture of around 5.68 because I wanted enough depth of field so that it looked like this. And I had to use that higher ISO. So if I zoom in, you'll see there's a lot of noise. Now the cool thing about Sharpen AI is it also will reduce noise as it sharpens. So that's what we're gonna see, how well it will sharpen these flowers, but also reduce the noise. So I don't have to send the image into, say, Denoise AI. Now, as far as what we're doing in this video, obviously we're in Lightroom. So we're going to use Sharpen AI as a Lightroom plugin. Also, I did some processing already in Lightroom. I just did some tone adjustments. I added a little bit of saturation. I didn't do anything with tone curve, nothing with the HSL color tab, no color grading. Now in detail, I made sure sharpening's all the way at zero. We're gonna do our sharpening in Sharpen AI. I also made lo sure luminance noise reduction is at zero because we're gonna use Sharpen AI to remove the noise. But I do have color noise reduction at 25 uh, to remove, remove any color noise. Um, well, Lightroom does a fine job with that. Lens corrections are built in uh, because it is a mirrorless camera. Nothing in transform, I did add a tiny darker vignette on it and that was it. So I'm ready to send this image to Sharpen AI. I'm going to right click right on it. I'm going to go down to edit in and I'm going to go down to Topaz Sharpen AI. This dialog uh, pops up because it's a raw file. I have to send it a copy of it over with Lightroom adjustments. It's going to be a TIFF photo pro photo RGB 16 bits per component, a resolution of 360, no compression and we'll click edit. Now you'll see a progress bar in the top left hand corner. Lightroom is creating a TIFF file with those specifications and then it will open that TIFF file up into Sharpen AI. Now I have my Sharpen AI set up with the four panel view. This gives me um, a look at all three different modes. That means motion blur out of focus and the two soft modes you could see over here. Um, in the top left hand side is the original image without any sharpening done to it at all. This is the motion blur version. This is the out of focus version. And over here is the too soft version. Now I'm going to reposition the navigator so that we could see like something I want sharp, like the center of that flower, but also see the noise, particularly in the background. Now it has to update again whenever you move that navigation uh, box, it will have to update. So we'll let it do its up. Let it, we'll let it do its updating. And as we go through these different modes here, first of all, the motion blur mode itself. That's this one. Um, I have it set to auto, so it automatically picked the very blurry subcategory between normal, very noisy, and very blurry. And it, you could see, even though it's not it didn't pick the very noisy catalog, it removed the noise. If you compare it to the original image over here, you can see it removed the noise. But what it did do, or what it is doing that I don't care for, you could see this haloing that's around. It has to update again, sorry about that, I moved it. The haloing around the, the, the uh, petals here, or the leaves or the petals or whatever, you could see that I don't care for that. There is haloing in the original image, you know, some chromatic aberration 
uh, from that uh, lens I used. As a matter of fact, I used that lens for an hour and I sent it back because I didn't like it. It focused very, very slowly and it had a lot of chromatic aberration. So I didn't care for it. So I sent it back. But these are images I did take with it. Now, if we could look at the out of focus uh, version, again, I used auto settings. It again picked very blurry and um, there's less ha haloing and it did get rid of the noise. And then if we look over at the too soft version, it got rid of the noise just as well. Um, and it, you know, looks sharper if you compare it to the version over here and then compare it over here. It is sharper. It does look like that the motion blur one is a, the sharpest of the three. Now I could come in now because I do like the too soft look and it has less haloing. Um, I could come in and, you know, like remove blur even more. It takes it off auto. Now it has to update. We'll see what that looks like. And you can see it's really real sharp now, starting to introduce a little bit of haloing. But again, that's was inherent of the lens. It's not really uh, Topaz Labs, Sharpen AI, uh, like creating that haloing. It's just kind of ex, uh, accentuating what's already there. Um, but I kind of like it like that. So let's go with this one and we'll click apply. And when I do that, it's going to then apply that sharpening and the noise reduction that was built in into Sharpen AI onto that TIFF file. And then we'll compare it to the original RAW file and we'll see uh, what it looks like. All right, now this is the image here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the Command key on, in on my Mac and then draw a square like right there. So we could get a good view of sharpness. Here, let's move it maybe this way a little bit. You could see how sharp it is. You could see it remove the noise. If I click on the original image over here, you could see that noise is there. And then let's look at the little water droplets that are on these petals right here. And if I go over there, you could see that it is considerably sharper. There's the original. And there is our sharpened image. There's our original. And there's our sharpened image. Let's zoom back out for a minute. Let me see if I could even uh, get in a little closer. Like right here. Okay, we're on the sharpened image. And there's the original image. Sharpened image. Original image. So I do understand what many of those people were telling me. That for macro shots in general, flower shots specifically, uh, Sharpen AI really does a nice job. So... That's it for this video. Let me know what you think of Sharpen AI. What do you mainly use it for? I know a lot of people use it for wildlife. I think most of the emails I got were from people that use it for wildlife. And I've done videos in the past where I've used it on a wildlife image. But let me know what you use Sharpen AI for and how you use it in your workflow. Do you use it as a plug-in to Lightroom, a plug-in to Photoshop, or do you use it as a standalone app? Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.